You know what we didn't do? What didn't we do? Happy Mother's Day. <gasps> you know what I noticed about our episodes last week? What's up? If you were red, green, colorblind, you were having a problem. Oh my we were like god. A, we were like the color rush game. <laughs> <laughs> I like that t-shirt though. The squad, man. Yeah, that's right. I got the yeah. squad. Yeah. Don't forget to hit, ah, good job. <laughs> so we were asked um, on the community tab to go through and do a 53 man roster prediction. Now again, it's a bit, yeah, it's a little early. No, okay. <laughs> it's a little early for roster predictions, but um, if somebody else had mentioned, talk about you know the, the Bean era, right? So what yep. was the roster like last year? What did we do last year? What moves did we make that impacted this year and how we approach the draft in the offseason. So we're kind of going to kind of do like a hybrid of those two topics. You ready? Yep. Okay. So if we're looking at what the Bills entered last season with, that's what we're looking at here. This was at the start of September 1st, 2018. That's, what, the, that's okay. what I pulled it from. Okay. So Mario went ahead and uh, pulled this by position. So we're going to take a look at the number of positions that they carried from last year into the, you know, into week one. For example, quarterbacks. They, they went into the season with Peterman and Allen. That's right. it because they traded A.J. McCarron to the right. Raiders. Yeah, no other quarterback. I know. Right? Rest in peace. Yeah. So, that being said, they only carried. They only wanted to carry two last year. Who do they have on the roster this year? Yeah. What they have is they have Barkley and Allen now. So yeah, that's it. Well, uh, Tyree Jackson is. Well, not. Jackson. No, I'm saying, but we will get into the fact that he has practice squad eligibility, which is yeah. which is an advantage for the Bills in that respect. Unless they feel somebody's going to sign him, which means they'll have to carry three on the, on the current right. active roster. So, um, that being that notwithstanding, we just wanted to say, okay, was there any kind of consistency with the numbers of the positions that they count taken into the 2019 season? Right, so, so knowing what we know from last year, yes. how is that going to impact the roster design for this year? Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be real, right? Last year, they're working on a blue light special budget. They're walking at Kmart with 20 bucks and just clear, running through the clearance aisle as your local Kmart is closing. And that's how they built their football team. I understand from a talent perspective, you're not gonna you 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 didn't have the funds to acquire your talent. However, the numbers of the positions that they had to have on on game day and for their active roster, I think, says a lot because it was a tryout. Yeah. It was a 16 game tryout sure for a bunch of people. Sure was. So in that respect, they're still gonna have the same numbers of the people that you know. Yeah, the odds are this is going to be pretty similar to what we see because mm -hmm. the numbers are the numbers. You're not walking in with 12 wide receivers. You can't feel the football team like that, you know? Yeah. They may carry six. They may carry five. There, there are some games where they only had four active, but they still had more on the roster. They just weren't active. Last season, they walked in with two quarterbacks. It was Peterman and Josh Allen. Uh, this year, they only got three quarterbacks on the roster. I still expect them to sign somebody now that Anderson retired. But I don't know if it'll be anybody significant. Significant, no, no. right? Does, does Allen have practice squad eligibility? Josh Allen. Josh Allen does still carry practice squad eligibility. Shocker. Won't make it through waivers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did that as a joke, but it's it's still a poignant fact that how can you? still qualify for a practice squad. How many games could you technically play? Okay, so the way that it works out is you have to have under three years worth of eligibility, right? Okay. So right. that's it. And But three years of eligibility means a bunch of different things. So you have to be on a, if you're on the practice squad for six weeks, you can you are considered having a year of football eligibility okay. used. Okay. Right. So, you know, that's how that works. You could have, you have to be on an NFL roster for three weeks or um, in the practice squad for six weeks. That's how you get a year of eligibility. Okay. It's a little bit more complicated than that because you can only have so many guys of certain years, but for the most part, that's the way it goes. And again, Tyree Jackson is somebody that can be picked off, but again, it's important to remember with practice squad, if somebody gets picked off your practice squad, they're going to an active roster. They have to be signed to the active roster, which means teams are going to have to put Jackson on their active roster. Yes. No team is going to sign up for bringing in a QB unless they ran into an injury problem. He wasn't even drafted. Right, exactly. So, again, from a liability standpoint, you can risk losing Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, moves us to running back. Last year, they carried five running backs. 
okay. at the start of the season. If I can remember correctly, I think it was it was McCoy, Ivory, yep. Murphy, yep. DeMarco counts. DeMarco and Jones. Oh, Taiwan Jones. Yes. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. So if you look, three of the four of those, with the exception of McCoy, everyone played special teams without yeah, McCoy. That's totally true. They all did. So that's gotta be a very telling point for who makes the roster now. Like you you got mad at me a couple weeks ago because you said is Singletary playing special teams? I go, why not? And you're like, he's not. He's not gonna play special teams. Mm -hmm. right. Um you have that leg. Now that just throws a curveball in the fact of do they keep DeMarco because of the running backs you have? He's the only guy really that plays special teams. Right. Him and Murphy. Mm -hmm. uh, Gore's not going to. You got rid of Ivory, now Gore's in. Gore's yeah. doesn't play special teams. Right, exactly. So so does that mean you carry less running backs and carry another an extra safety, an extra linebacker, an extra wide receiver? To me, I, I'm with you. I agree because you know your two running backs, possibly three, are not contributing on special teams. I think you only carry three at that point. Why would you carry more than Gore, Singletary, and and McCoy? So you carry three running backs, but none of them play special teams? Yeah, I mean, you're sacrificing the position of special teams. That's it. But it, free, it allows you to free up and grab another wide receiver who can play special teams, or a linebacker, or a cornerback, or a safety. Terrifying, I know, but... I mean, it's this is where we are. You're not. You can't put Singletary in the practice squad. He'll never make it. Yeldon no. is signed to a two-year deal that you can well, walk away Yeldon. from. Yeah, you can walk away yeah. from Yeldon, but you Yeldon will have to play special teams. Yeah, but, I think he'll he'll probably fill that Ivory role. Yeah, I mean Ivory was bigger than Yeldon. Oh, he Yeldon. is, no doubt. But I mean, you're you're the you're on the punt team. You're mm -hmm. sitting back on the punt team, right? Uh, I don't know if Ivory played kickoff. Uh, maybe you guys can help know. us out with that. I'm not really sure, but he did play some special teams. Is the, is right. The... Well, and the Bills right now have McCoy, Murphy, uh, Cinderus Perry, Devin Singletary, Christian Wade, TJ Yeldon, Frank Gore, Keith Ford, all in the roster. Keith Ford still carries a year practice spot eligibility. So He does. And uh, Perry, Perry's the, that you got four special teams. Right. So he's the guy you think would be on the roster. Right. So what do you, who do you carry? Do you carry, do you cut DeMarco? You got McCoy, Gore, uh, Singletary, and Perry is your four. And then, and Yeldon, you carry five? You carried five last year. Yeah, exactly. And then, in that case, in that scenario, you do have two out of, instead of having three guys play special teams, or four, yeah. you have two. Right, exactly. That's a big cut. That's Huge. A big cut. Huge. Um, yeah, it's that's a tough one. The running back position is a real tough one. That's a real tough situation. I don't know. I mean... I don't want to say someone might get cut that everyone thinks is going to be here, but... Do you think McCoy's getting cut? I'm not saying that. That's what I said. I think McCoy's more likely to get cut than McCoy. I don't know why you... That's for a different episode. I, I suppose. Got, I, got I suppose. Right. So running back's going to be a real challenge. I don't really know which direction they're going to go with it, but either way you cut it, you're losing positions on special teams. A wide receiver. So the Bills carried six last year going into week one this year <laughs> they've got like 12 on the roster so you got Cole Beasley Victor Bolden John Brown Robert Foster Zay Jones Ray Ray McLeod Isaiah McKenzie Cam Phillips uh, Andre Roberts Damari Scott and Duke Williams so those are all your tight end, or all your wide receivers so I mean we could circle Brown uh, and Brown and Beasley and Beasley you know they're making the team so there's two okay you're not even circling your boy Zay Jones yeah Nope. He's one of the biggest receivers on the team. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I know, right? It's The Bills clearly were not valuing um, height when they went after guys. Oh, you know who else isn't on here? Mm -hmm. David Sills. He's not He's not on the yeah. ESPN roster. Yeah, not yet. So um, we, we are missing some guys. It is this. very interesting to see how they went into last year um, with Calvin Benjamin, Zay Jones, Andre Holmes. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got a pretty, you got a very different look to your roster. Now you had you had stated that you think Ray and McLeod is probably going to be a casualty. Yeah, yeah. He I, does have practice squad eligibility again. Yeah, he still does. Um, I don't think anybody would touch him. So I think that. Yeah. And having him and Jackson develop on the practice squad is very telling. Sure. I would like that. That's one. Two is not to say he's going to over overtake Jaden. Josh Allen, but you know what I mean. You know, right. he can get used to both of them can get used to the speed of the game. Sure. In that respect, um, so uh, if how many did they have? They picked six. six. 
If you had to pick six out of that, you said you got Brown and Beasley. Yeah. I would say Jones, mm-hmm. Foster. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's four. Uh, Brown, Be- Brown, Beasley, Jones, Foster, and oh god. Yeah, it gets it gets a little up after that. So McKenzie. Be- okay. And uh, my wild card would be Williams. Duke Williams mm-hmm. still carries practice squad eligibility, brother. That's 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 the reason why he would make it. Someone else would. If well, that's why he's, he's twenty six years old. You know, like he's already twenty six. You said like you say that he's twenty six, like he's a tennis player. Twenty six is a dinosaur. Is a tennis I, player. I know. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, it's there's some things about Duke Williams, and we've gotten some heat in the comment section about. There's some things that's about fine. Duke Williams that I really like, and there's some things that are just question marks. So, I know, like the press coverage gets me about it. I know that they I mean, don't you press. You see this now. the same way, so I don't know if we're being super objective. No, no. Well, here's what I'll say to you. Here's what I'll say to you. And you made the opposite argument, which is interesting because guys don't press him because they can't press him. Right. But the fact is, I haven't seen him get off of press coverage and get into a route. Yeah. In the in the film that I've been researching, mm-hmm. and I haven't found yet. Because the, you, we mentioned the CFL game is completely different. They, yeah. You, you get a you running right start before yeah. you can get up to the line. That's one. Yeah, just throw that film out. I know. But you had a very interesting thing. You know, what this team uh, values, you, we saw in the Iron Bowl. Anytime that Auburn was running, he wasn't on the field. Yeah. So <clears> why <throat> wouldn't you put him on the field in a running down? Is he just not physical enough? You want to conserve him for passing downs? Right. I don't understand it. It's like you're tipping your hand when you bought him in the game. Or if he just wasn't interested in participating. Because he was a bit of... There were some well, off-the-field concerns. We got rid of someone who wasn't interested in participating last year. Yeah. Like Calvin Benjamin. So. Right. Well, I'm just saying, it's, I think Duke Williams has been a little bit humbled by his career experience and is willing yeah. to revisit his motivation. Yeah, so if I'm carrying six, uh, Cole Beasley, uh, John Brown, Robert Foster. Um, St. Jones on the fence. Uh, yeah, for me. Remember, yeah. they drafted him. They didn't sign him. I so know. That's a big, big, big this deal. is a big deal. That's why I'm on the fence. Because, <laughs> yeah, Does he carry practice squad? He doesn't. He doesn't. No, he's no. he's past us at this point. Okay. Right. So, um, Zay Jones, yeah, I got to take him. So it's going to be John Brown, Cole Beasley, Zay Jones. Um, Robert, Robert Foster, and then I like McKenzie a lot. I don't think he beats out McLeod. Um, I don't think David Sills makes the roster, um, but maybe he does if they're trying to protect him from the practice squad because they'll lose him in a heartbeat. I think they'll lose David Sills in a heartbeat. I could see that. If he, I, if he goes he out was... and plays in some preseason games um, and plays the way that I think a lot of Bills fans are expecting him to play, um, they'll lose him to the practice squad. He'll have to make the roster. He was my backup for not. For, for Williams, yeah, um, uh, I just, I just, uh, I don't know. Williams to me is just so intriguing. Just, that, just as so many people are intrigued by Sills, I'm intrigued by Williams. Right. I don't know why. It's there's a lot to like about Duke Williams, but there's also a lot of question marks because you're yes. going back to film that's three, four years old. I know. You know, it's. I, know. A little tough. I looked a lot better three, four years ago. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Tight ends. Uh, Spills carried four. They've only got. Five right now. So they've got Tommy Sweeney, Tyler Croft, Dawson Knox, Jake Fisher, and Jason Kroom. I say they carry four and Fisher's gone. Yeah, I'm kind of in that boat. I think Sweeney makes the team. Um, I got they're real, real young. Real young. Oh, yeah. But um, I, I, it's still possible that they sign another guy. They sign another blocker. You know, they, they had talks with um, Lee Smith again because that's who, primarily what he is. He's well, they had a four, road grader. They had four on the roster last year, which yeah. was Kroom, Thomas, mm-hmm. Clay, yep. and Kari Lee. Oh, I forgot about Kari Lee. Mm-hmm. They yeah. cut. They cut two. Mm-hmm. One of them being Baby Hands. Yep. No, Nick O'Leary. Did you know his grandfather was? Stop it. Did you know Chris Hogan played lacrosse? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I can see them carrying four because that's the the this offense. That's what they want to do. They have, and if you looked at it last year, they had, um, yeah, they, they had three pass catching tight ends and one road grade. I look at this a little differently though because I could see them carrying five tight ends. Wow, <clears throat> and here's why: because Dawson Knox could pick up that special team snap that you lose to the running back. 
He's six four. He's yeah. not super fast, but I think he's fast enough to play special teams. You got a point. I you think Dawson Knox could pick up those snaps. The thing that we didn't that's talk about. That's how he walked. That's that's the thing. Dawson Knox was a walk on. And he was a special teams player. I'm mad at us. Why? Who do we forget? I don't know. Forget. Roberts. We just got him from the Jets. He, the only that wide receiver is going to make the team. What? He's a return specialist. Oh, Andre Roberts. Yeah. How, yeah. Oh, I forgot about it. You know what I mean? It's so intriguing because you think about it. They carried five running backs. Yeah. If they carry three. Or they only carry four, you open up a spot either for the tight end or the wide receiver for right. that special team spot. Right. Well, again, you know, Dawson Knox walked on, um, and he was a special teams player. That's what he did. Like, it's he made an impact yeah. at Ole Miss on special teams. So, I, that's what I mean. I, it's, I think that's where he ends up, you know. it's And Sills was the same way. Sills made an impact on special teams. So... Mm-hmm. You know, it's <clears throat> a lot of these guys that they added um, are going to fill that need for you. I know a lot of people say, well, you know, who cares about special teams? You care about special teams when your team's been in the basement of special teams rankings the last five years. Like, we've been awful on special teams for a long time. It's a big difference having Josh uh-huh. Allen start start the, uh, start the drive at his own 15 versus yeah. his own 40. Right. I could see them carrying five tight ends again just because you – if you have one that plays special teams and pick up the snap that you lose by keeping Gore, you know, that's... I think that's, that's the thing important. you have to try to weigh, too. Is Gore worth two, I mean, two positions? Right. Offensive line, they carried four tackles, three guards, one center, and one swing. So, guard, center. I, that's long. Yeah, that was that was long. That'll be long. That, I agree it was groy, but now it's long. Yeah. So, for centers right now, you officially have Bodine, Long, and Morris. I think we can all just agree Russ Bodine is Dunsky. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I wavered on that though. I thought really? Bodine, you know, because Bodine wasn't he wasn't hateful last depending year. Depending on how the bloodbath of guards plays out, yeah, it could be. Could Long be. could. Okay, we're starting Morse. We have Bodine. You're not playing well at guard as, as we thought. They so, carried three, gu- four tackles, three guards, a swing, and a center. So right. Mitch Morse is your center. Yeah, right. Okay. And, so we Long, got that, that and Long does seem like your swing. Okay, so we got those two positions. So we got seven more positions to fill. Yeah. Three guards, four tackles. Do they have four tackles? They do. They have five. Deion Dawkins, Cody Ford, Connor McDermott, Ty Niseki, and Leandre Waddle. Okay. McDermott has practice squad eligibility from last year. He can still go on the practice squad. I don't so think so. I think he does. I'm, I'm, I'm like almost hand sanitizer sure that he does. So we got Niseki, Waddle, Ford, and Dawkins as our tackles. Right. Um, you're out of all those. McDermott might be the only one with practice squad eligibility because you're not gonna you're not gonna wave Cody Ford. That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. No, no, God, no. No. Um, so with that being said, the amount of guards you have left. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they also have Cyril's listed as a guard. And he's Cyril's, a swing. Yeah, and he Cyril's play tackle, so he could swing. Yeah. Um, so if we're looking at tackles. Um, you know, Cody Ford is probably your starting right tackle. Deion Dawkins is probably your starting left tackle. I mean, just calling what it probably what it is. Niseki is going to be your swing tackle, and then McDermott and Lee, Lee Green Waddle. Those are you're fighting out there. Or you keep Cyril's because he can play all over the line except center. Yeah. Right. It, I mean, you re-sign Cyril's early. Right. Right. Uh, Waddle could be odd man out. Does that seem weird? Be. Does that seem weird to say that? No, I don't think so. I don't want to gain any enemies, but you, you look at how this line's shaping up. They they didn't they draft McDermott or they signed McDermott? Mm. No, they no they signed him. I think he was undrafted. Okay. But they brought him in and they cut him and put him on the practice squad. And then yeah. they brought him up when right. they were doing all the tryouts mm. near the end of the year. Um, so he is a very intriguing prospect for how much they've worked with him. Mm-hmm. And depending on how he comes into this season. I know it's a, it's a guy that was undrafted and all that stuff, but so is Sills. Everyone mm-hmm. loves him. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think when you look at guard, guard will tell you a little bit more about tackle. Because, oh, again, yeah. you look at guard, you have Ike Bodinger, Vlad Dukas. Who I can't believe he's still on this roster. He won't be. John Feliciano, Cyril's, yep. Quentin Spann, uh, Wyatt Teller. 
I think that the can Waddle play guard? Probably. I'd love to put him next to Ford. You know what I mean? I'd love to drop him down and then put Feliciano on the other side or Quentin Span on the other side. So you have Quentin Span was one hell of a sign. So you have Dawkins, Span, Morse, Waddle, and Ford. That would just Good Lord. Do it. No, but I'm saying if you can't do that, if you can't do that line, I think you put Feliciano and Span in there. And then you got Cyril's as your guy that swings, and, and Long is your guy that swings. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And you call it a day. You get rid of Ducasse. Yep. Boudinger is out of there. Uh, Waddle is. Yeah. You don't. I think he He's, makes it because you you had four tackles last year. You right, don't you, have a lot this year. Right, but I mean, if you're carrying Naseki, that's three. And then if you carry, carry Cyril's, that's four. Or you have four. Again, you can free up a spot for mm. something else. Mm. The roster, it's it's a real battle. Like, it's a real big-time battle across that offensive line. And, again, they brought in a lot of guys who are really proficient at pass protection, mm-hmm. right? Um, they're they're going to be playing standard blocking schemes. They're not going zone, right? We already know that. And the Quentin Spam signing, I thought, was the for the offensive line, was the most underrated signing that they made. It was so sneaky. I didn't even realize he was even available until they signed him. When they signed him, I go, oh, wow. I did not realize that he was still out I don't there. know what's going on, though. Why Why was he available? Right. That I don't know. That A uh, little insider information on that would have been great. I don't know why he was still available. But this team completely rebuilt their offense. This is a tough team to make. Like, it's a hard team to make on offense. It's harder to make on defense. Yeah. I mean, but you, talk, you want to talk about the... September 1st, 2018 offense that was put on the field from the 53 mm-hmm. versus the 2019 that's going to be put on it. It's like a new team. Yeah. A brand new offense. Yep. And I, I mean, I'm excited to see how it plays out. But that's trying to make this prediction in May of what oh, the 53 so will be. Hard. That's why I said the numbers would probably be a little bit better to go by because then you can you can at least right. gauge how many they, they look at that they're going to get. That's a good point. Yeah. No, I agree. And you know, special teams is going to play a major factor. It's, that's It has to play a factor. Yep. There's no Cyril's choice. Cyril's has played it. Yep. I yeah. think Waddle played it because that's all he did play when he was in. Right. Yeah, it's got it's got to be a factor. And I know it's an uncomfortable topic because it's not something that people are, like, can, you know, claim to be experts about. They don't claim to be experts about special teams, <laughs> right? Um, but you have to have enough bullets in the gun to at least fill a squad on special teams and it, it has to be a focus because the Bills have been so bad at it um, in recent history so I don't know man I'm I'm feeling good about where the offense is I'm still a little uneasy but the fact still remains that this is going to be a nasty team to try and make <laughs>